This is tough. You talk about a great show we've got today. We're going after these bad boys. Paddlefish in Oklahoma. It's going to be a grand time. No question about it. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's a toad. Get him. I'm going to tell you something right there. <laughs> Good girl. That is a good one. I gotta get him out of that. That's a heck of a crappie right there. Now get out of her way. <laughs> That's a good start right there. <laughs> Tell you what. The G3 Sportsman is presented by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. We're getting rigged up and we're here on Grand Lake here in uh, Northeast Oklahoma and we're going after spoonbill. I hadn't been spoonbill fishing in an awful long time. We're right here by the highway, just kind of putting in here at the beach. But uh, we've got some really strong wind today and but we're gonna try to get in some areas where the wind won't be as bad. And, hopefully get into some spoonbill. It's gonna be a little unique way that uh, people catch spoonbill around here and I and, uh, think you guys will enjoy watching how my good friend here, Rusty Pritchard, here in Northeast Oklahoma, is gonna show us how to catch spoonbill today. It's gonna be, gonna be interesting, gonna be fun. Well, there you go, right there. Ooh, uh, That's what we're looking for. There's a couple of ways that you can do this spoonbilling. And what most people do is they troll slowly up there and they use the rods to just kind of jerk back and forth. And so you're always holding on to the rod. One of the things that Rusty does that's unique from everybody else is that you'll see here in a bit, he puts his rods out and then we troll and just leave the rods in the holders. All these fish are schooled up in here. So the idea is you come through and with these weights keeping that keeping them barbs down, and these are all barbless hooks, it comes through and we're looking to snag one. These spoonbill don't just bite hooks like you would like catfish or something else, so you have to snag them. And so when you come through, I know it kind of looks a little primitive or whatever, but it's really no different from with trolling with crankbaits or whatever and waiting on something to hit. And it shouldn't take long that we'll probably have a fish on. Big fish right there. Mm -hmm. There he is. Pull it right out of there. Clear these lines out. I think this is gonna walk over here. So. I told you, Sal, they don't take long, they'll hit. And now it's on. That's pretty That's good. a good fish, fish right there, Rusty. That's a good one there. How about that? I'm leaving tagged. It's been a tag, tag fish, hasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Good. There ain't much I can do with you right here, bro. That's a good one there. That's a big female. There you go, right there. Now you can see where that, that hook just got her. Came right out. It doesn't hurt them, does it, Rusty? No, no, it just pokes a little hole in her. A lot of these fish, you know, these fish right here mostly are just cartilage, aren't they? All cartilage, there's no bone whatsoever in one. How about that? <laughs> First spoon bill of the day, and it's a good one, too. Let's let her loose. Now, 
you know, you'd think these big old fish right here would just eat about anything, but they're not predators, are they, Rusty? No, they, they're, they're all. They eat nothing but plankton, don't plankton they? Plankton and algae. They're a filter feeder. And you can see right in here through her mouth where they uh, filter all that stuff out. Now, and there's always been a myth that their nose right here is used to root up the mud and everything else, but that's actually a sonar, isn't it? That's how right. They, how they locate them on their food and stuff, isn't it? There's actually some sensors right here on the end of their bill. Yeah. You can see them little divots right here. And the biologists are, are thinking that's what they're sensing their, their algae and their plankton with down there at the But she's water. perfectly healthy. And I'm gonna let her go. I think she's good. We hadn't had her out of the water very long. And there she goes. G3 Boats, quality, performance, satisfaction, g3boats.com. You never hear someone think back lovingly about all those great times their folks used to take them video game. Create some lasting memories. Take your kid fishing. Shakespeare makes it easy with fishing gear for the whole family. America Goes Fishing with Shakespeare. It's for those who get up early on weekends and those who'd rather rough it than take it easy. It's for those who know it's not just a sport, but a way of life. The new Food Saver Game Saver Vacuum Sealing System keeps food fresh up to five times longer with a rugged design and 12 volt adapter cord for easy use in the field. Ensuring your game and fish is fresh when you need it. The Food Saver Game Saver Vacuum Sealing System. Field it fresh, sealed fresh. This portion of the G3 Sportsman is brought to you by G3 Boats. A great catch. O'Reilly Auto Parts, the professional parts people, and Fiocchi Ammunition. What's your game? These fish will move up to stage holes. Uh, the first stage hole here on Grand Lake will be in 60 foot of water. As the season goes on, they'll move up into 30, you know, and the, and, and the main channel gets shallower is what it's doing. These fish like to, to hang around drop-offs on the channel. Uh, they'll use those as guides to follow up the river. Uh, I just, you just have to search for them. And one day they'll be in one spot, the next day they may be a quarter mile on up the river channel, but you just have to search for them on the graph. And the best way to do it is just to follow the drop-offs. Somewhere along that river channel, there will be some spoonbill on them drop-offs this time of year. Up, two on the bottom. Oh, fish on, fish on. Already? Yeah. Man. Uh. Hadn't even got settled in. <laughs> well, that makes it nice because I don't have to reel in the two <laughs> rods. We got two out. Couldn't even get all the rods out. See, now Rusty's got this one on that uh, pin slammer rod that, uh, that he likes to use too. But good rods. I've, I've used them for years. That's another, you catch the male, don't you? Yeah, you're the female catcher. Well, I've always kind of been partial to <laughs> the female. There All we right. go. 
Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a, a nice little male. Yeah, that's an average male there. That's he's probably 20, 25 pounds. Yeah, and I mean they're not going to get near as big as the female. No, no, they? no. Your females are, your females are the big fish. These yeah. fight a little harder. The females are a little more lazy, like to lay around. <laughs> the males get pretty active. Of course, I didn't say that. So. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you say? Let's uh, let's get him, get him back get in. Get him back in and. Good job, Rusty. Didn't take long, did it? No, it really didn't. Here you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> One good splash in the face. And gone. So that's how it goes sometimes. I mean, you don't even get the rods out, and when you've got good pods of fish right here, they'll just hit it before, it, uh, before you get them all uh, thrown out. A lot of the people I take out on my guide trips have never even seen a spoonbill. It's just not anywhere where you can go catch it. Uh, the average size fish is going to be 20 pounds or bigger. Uh, the average seems to be this year, you know, 25 pounds is the average this year. Uh, they're just a very, very unique fish. They just don't have them everywhere. Uh, they are a very, very strong pull fish. Uh, people can't believe the brute force of these fish, how they can pull. Going for a second. There he is. Right there. Got him? Yeah, I still got him. I'm just, I don't want to clear all these lines, get all these lines. I'm going to put that one down right there. Now we're talking. I like it. If you ever see me with a power rod, I get excited because I know that I'm catching big fish. Boy, and I mean, they don't want to come up off the bottom either. Golly. This one feels bigger than the other one, but I don't think it is. Just pulling it against that current. Yeah, let's drive her up here. Yeah, that's a good one. Well, oh, she's still going to give you a fit, <laughs> isn't she? We'll wake up a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. another good one there. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> that's a good the, one. See the hole, it don't really. Yeah, and that was probably my fault right there, but it's no not bleeding. That's just the cartilage in there, isn't it? Yeah, all cartilage. No bones whatsoever in one of these. See how heavy that thing. Look at that. <laughs> that's a good fish right there, son. That is a real Good fish. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> Spoonbill fishing at its best right here in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, all right, girl. Man. There she goes. There's a, there's a long history to these paddlefish. People call them spoonbills, and justifiably so with that long, big spoon nose is why. But actually, a spoonbill is actually a, a bird, an aquatic bird. And paddlefish is the actual name of these fish. And there's a, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of history to these paddlefish right here. It's, a lot of it. You know, the, the paddlefish is an interesting fish that you, they don't, you can't go out and catch them on a, with bait. They, they eat microscopic organisms, uh, uh, phytoplankton, zooplankton, and the only time that you can really catch them is when they're on the spawning run. Coming up in the rivers, it kind of it kind of pushes them into a narrow area. They, they stay in the lake for nine years before they ever make a run, so they're protected for nine years before they ever start, up their, uh, start their, their spawning runs. I kind of like the salmon coming out of the ocean. We have been stocking, not in this northeast Oklahoma area. We have had, with this, our population is really great. It doesn't need to be stocked. It's being managed very well. But across the state of Oklahoma, some of our lakes never had paddlefish. Uh, we are now, from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, we have stocked uh, Lake Eufaula, 
We stalked Call Lake, we stalked through the Gull Lake, so we're, we're trying to spread this fisheries out. Some hunters only stand in the bargain line, and there are others who will never stand behind any brand, but some will always stand for quality without compromise. Where do you stand? Fioki, what's in your gun? You just want to fish, not mess around with buttons and settings and such. That's why they made every Garmin Echo fish finder easy to use. You see fish, you catch fish, easy. Fight fish, not your fish finder. Get the unsurpassed power, clarity, and dependability of a Garmin Echo fish finder. This segment of the G3 Sportsman is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Shakespeare, since 1897. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Beretta, 500 years, one passion. You know, another method that you've seen a lot of these people do that we've talked about is, the, is what we call the jerking. Yeah, this traditional snagging. <laughs> the traditional way of doing it and it's just holding the rod in your hand and, and jerking so that's what we're going to do now and uh, what we've done we've taken one of the weights off so we've now only got one pound of weight 16 ounces and then we'll just uh, what just let it let, let it her, in there let her down to the bottom let a little more out I've noticed some people are using real long rods They'll wear you out faster than your little short, stiff rods. If you use the long rods, you're fighting the flex of the, of the rod, and a lot of them use a monofilament line, which that's stretching a whole lot, so when they pull a full jerk, they're only getting about a half a jerk through there. Right. We're using this braided line, these stiffer rods. And when you move that rod, it's moving that weight just as much as you're moving that rod. There it is, right there. Right, right there. Oh, I got one too. Double. Oh <laughs> my. Woo. <laughs> Boy, Double. I, you what? Uh, Man. First. Boy, I didn't think I had that much line out either. Oh. Well, not heat, I can't help you. I got her. That's been tagged too, hasn't yeah. it, Rusty? I may have one more burst of energy to get him up there to you. And then I'm going to be done. Let's see if we can grab him here. <laughs> Woo! How about that? Double trouble <laughs> with Rusty Pritchard. Good times. Out here the traditional way, and then of all things, we double up. How cool is that? <laughs> Worked out pretty good. Is that is that happen very Not often? Very often. Not Two very people often. throwing out there. We had four rods going at once, and we'd go on and we'd hook one. Then we both held a rod and did the traditional uh, jerking in this snagging, and then we both catch one. How about that? But that's pretty cool. So we've given you a couple of different ways that these uh, guys over here in Oklahoma and here in the Ozarks catch these spoonbill. As you can see, the proof's in the pudding, isn't <laughs> it, Rusty? That's right, that's right. This is why all these people come from all over the country to come down here and catch these spoonbill because they're a lot of fun. They're a trophy fish, and let me tell you something. They will wear <laughs> you out, there's no doubt. So we're gonna run up to the cleaning station up here. We're gonna get these things processed or whatnot. We're gonna keep a couple of little males and uh, show you what that's all about here in just a bit. Here in Oklahoma, after you decide you're gonna keep one, you've gotta put a tag on it. All a tag is is your name, your address, and your paddle fish number. And what I use, the easiest thing is duct tape. Just write your name on it, and we'll put it around the bill. That way when we turn it in, they'll know whose fish it is, because sometimes they get a lot of fish checked in at one time up there. On the back of your paddle fish permit, you have to write the date, and the time of when you caught the fish. 
These are fish that were brought in by the boat. They picked up. Right. The boat will meet. This will meet the boat down at the water. Right. And they have gone to, to the boats on the river and picked up the fish. All you have to do, you just call our number here at the center, and, and that we have a dispatcher who dispatches the boats out, and uh, they'll send it right to you and get it picked yeah, up. Yeah, that's what we did. We we dropped our fish off with them. And then they bring them up here and then they'll... Yeah, they'll come in here and they'll put them in these tanks and they already have the tag on them. They go there on the scanner. Mm -hmm. And when he pulls up here, that scanner downloads right into our, into our network. And this is where all the biological data is taken. You can see they're pulling both jaws on the fish. Those jaws will be taken to... to uh, this is Dr. Skarnecki from the University of Idaho. He takes them back up there and he will cross-section them, put them on a, a slide, and look at the growth rate. Mm -hmm. So we age every fish. Mm -hmm. What we do here is kind of three aspects to our program. First and, and foremost is the biological data that we gather from these fish. We, the last two years, we've gotten more information than we have since 1974. We take really the, actually the two worst things away for the fishermen. First we, first, we clean them, and then getting rid of the carcasses has been a big problem up here in Northeast Oklahoma. The third part and how this program can work because it's, it costs about $400,000 to operate this program each year and there's no possible way that we could do that with license money. That when, the, when a female comes in, 60% of the fish coming in are males, 40% uh, of them are females. And when a female comes in, we take the eggs out of it. Those eggs are taken into the processing room and they're processed into caviar. What we tried to come in and do is salvage these eggs. These are fish that are being caught. We salvage that. We, we take that caviar that we make and we put it back into the program and it supports it. While all that was going on, we had our tags come in here and we picked up our fish. Never had to clean one. How nice was that? That's all right. You did a good job cleaning these. Thank you. <laughs> I got some good workers in there. Yeah, no kidding. Introducing a revolutionary way to attract fish, the Mossback Fish Rack. From the box to the water, setup is a snap, and you can be fishing in no time. The rough surface on the branches encourages algae growth, and the unique design virtually eliminates hanging hooks. Use the Mossback Fish Rack in your pond, hang it off your dock, or sink it in your local lake. Join the guides, pros, and weekend fishermen who are already reaping the rewards. No matter how you stack them, we attract them. To learn more, visit mossbackrack.com. I promise to be ready, anytime. I promise to love the sport just as much as you do. I promise to always be flexible. I promise to pull my weight and then some. I am Trilene and I promise to never give up. Built with innovation, fueled by passion. Berkeley Trilene, America's most trusted fishing line. The Yamaha VMAX SHO. First it changed the game, now it set the standard. But don't take our word for it. The whole shot was everything they said it was going to be. Yeah. We accelerated from like 50 miles an hour to 70 and it was like that. So fast, so quiet. I mean, you give it power and it's just there. That thing right there is just bad. The whole shot on it, the second to none. Oh yeah, it's for real. Take a demo ride and feel the power yourself. You'll know why we call it the game changer. That's the one! That's the one! Trusted from coast to coast, Team Catfish Fishing Tackle is helping catfish anglers rule the waters that the catfish live in. With over 200 innovative products specifically designed for catfish anglers, you can't go wrong with the Team Catfish brand. Be sure to check out all the free how-to catfishing videos and the expansive dealer network at teamcatfish.com. There's fish on. Man. Oh, he's running right through the wire. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, he's going all the way through. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. Uh, let's bring that one over. Okay, this one too. There you go. One more. And then. I'll tell you, he's giving you a fit, isn't he? He don't want to come up. Golly. That may not be a uh, male this time for you. I'll break my... Hang on. Break my streak here. 
good fish. That is a good fish. Good isn't fish. It? Man at the wind. You broke streak your male fish. streak, didn't yeah. you, bro? Finally got a big one. Come here. Got my shirt on. Okay. That's a good one there. <laughs> That's our biggest one of the day, no doubt. I want to go 50 easy. We'll be putting these heavy weights on and, and trolling fast, and it cuts all the work out of it. You don't have to sit out there and jerk all day long. And uh, now we're running them in the rod holders. You ain't even got to hold the rod anymore. That way you, you can have more rods out than just one. Everybody else is fishing one rod and jerking all day long and wearing themselves out, as you can see. And uh, it's, it's a lot easier than the way we're doing it. It's been a good day. It sure has. And when you come down and catch fish the way that Rusty catches them, you'll want to come back. This is a unique way of doing it. We've had a lot of fun today. We've learned a lot about the paddle fish. And uh, it's just been a very interesting experience. And I know your arms are wearing out. <laughs> I'm getting tired. OK. <laughs> but anyway, hey, we've had a good time. Hope you enjoyed the show. And we'll see you out there somewhere next week right here on the G3 Sportsman. Thanks for watching. Let's let this go. The G3 Sportsman has been brought to you by G3 Boats. A great catch. Fioki Ammunition. What's your game? O'Reilly Auto Parts. The professional parts people. Shakespeare Fishing since 1897. Berkeley. Catch more fish. Longer Life Products. Keeps bait alive for days. Beretta, 500 years, one passion. And by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Where you it's at? It's kind of work. <laughs> it's work. Now they can only keep one a day and uh, kind of get the population back to flourishing real good. But today it looks like the population's pretty good. The population's it? looking good today. Well, we ain't going to get none caught standing here talking. No, let's get after it. Mercy. If anybody wants a good cardio workout, this is it. Now we got fish to eat. And, and they didn't, didn't, got to and clean didn't them. have to clean them. They didn't have to clean them. That's right. <laughs>